and welcome to my series of short videos in which we discuss how the Arduino interacts with various electronic components. Yes, in less than 15 minutes we'll go over the basics, how they can be used, hints, tips, tricks and traps. Now, passing variables into a function uh, is just taken for granted really, but do we actually understand what's happening at the point of passing that variable into a function? Well, this was brought to mind recently when I was uh, playing about with this device here, which is my storage bin monitor. Uh, out the back there, I've got three identical units like this. This one's in here just to aid with my testing for the thing on over there on the wall. And uh, I made a very simple mistake. And I thought, what's going on? Why isn't this being updated? And of course, the, the answer is because passing by reference and passing by value are extremely similar and sometimes it's easy to make a mistake. So I thought, hmm, maybe this is something I need to tell you guys about. So let's let's think about a very simple piece of code and we can have a function or two that uh, accept parameters in and uh, let's see how they're passed. I want to do a shout out for JLC PCB. No, stop, stop, don't go away. Look what they're doing. $2 for aluminium circuit boards. This is absolutely incredible. If you've ever wanted to try an aluminium PCB, now's the time to do it. Now remember, aluminium PCB is a single sided normally with the aluminium on the bottom. Then you have a dielectric layer that uh, transfers the heat up to the top copper layer. Now aluminium is very, very strong and it will suck the heat away out of your components without the need for extra heat sinks, for example. Go and have a look at their website and check them out. And there's more. JLC PCB now allow you to create your own parts library because there's nothing more disappointing than creating a PCB and then finding you can't get the parts or there's a big long delay. Now you can create your own custom parts library to ensure you get the components you need and of course the associated footprints so you know they're going to fit on the PCB itself. To get to this page that describes everything you ever need to know about creating your parts library simply go to their home page and then click on the link at the top. Very, very simple and a really, really useful feature. Go and check out JLC PCB now. So here's a very simple little bit of code. It's, yes, it's demo code, so it doesn't do a lot, but it shows you the difference between passing variables by value and by reference. So let's just whiz through this. Um, I am using the library libprintf here to give me the printf facility within the Arduino environment that isn't there normally. Yet, Yes, you get it with the ESP32 and the 8266 by default, but not with the Arduino. But by using that library here, that I did go through in some detail in there are that video, it just makes life a whole lot easier and stops you having reams and reams of serial.print statements. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be using here just to illustrate a point or two. Right, so first of all, what's on this line here? Well, this says integer int1 equals 1. And yes, global variable. And as you can see, there's a little very annoyed face there because I don't like global variables unless there's a very good reason for having them. And the very good reason in this case is just to keep it out of the way so it doesn't cluster up the demo code here. But normally, I wouldn't be using it like that. But that's our little integer int1. And uh, we've set it to one, and that's what we're using as part of our little demo. The setup does nothing other than to initiate the serial output, so nothing to see there. Uh, this little function here, pass int by value, well, we'll be looking at that in just a minute, but let's have a look at the loop first. So what we're saying is, if we look at line 29, we're saying that the result of the call to pass int by value, yes, that one up here that we just looked at, using int1 as the parameter, yes, that global value there, is uh, printed out here, in fact. But what do we actually mean by pass int by value int1? Yeah, Int1 happens to be a 2-byte integer, and its value initially certainly is 1, and we're passing it to this particular function. But what happens, you know, in the background, what does the compiler do? Well, it goes, great, you want me to pass an integer to that function over there. I'll take this integer, I'll make a duplicate, a copy of it, and give that to the function to do what it wants with. It's a bit like if you have to prove your identity. You might take your passport somewhere, and you go to some official place, and you go, here I am, and here's my passport. 
But of course, the last thing you really want to do is give up your passport. So they say, great, I've seen the passport. I can tell it's a real one um, and I've looked through it. That's great. I'll make a copy, a photocopy of the relevant page inside and you keep that passport. I don't want it anymore and I'm not going to touch it. So now they've got a copy of that passport and they take it away and do whatever it is they like with it. But whatever they do with it, it doesn't affect your original passport, does it? And that's exactly the same as what happens here. Where it says pass int by value, int 1, we're taking a copy of that integer, a duplicate, and yes, that is two more bytes that the compiler is going to stick onto the, uh, the heap for you. Copy the value into it and then pass it to that function that you can see there that says int pass by value. So let's have a look at what that does. So it accepts this integer value here, the copy, of the parameter you passed, remember, not the original. It adds one to it with this statement here, a little bit longhand, but let's keep it simple. So my int becomes equal to my int plus one. So we've incremented this value and we're returning my int by this return variable here. So pass int by value function returns an integer as its response. Now you might say, ah, but hang on, my int has now been incremented, so surely this value has changed. And it has. My int has indeed changed, otherwise it wouldn't work. But the original parameter that we passed to this function down here as int1, int1 has not changed because that was the original value and we haven't changed that. We're passing by value a duplicate copy of that, in this case, integer. Fine. And we can prove that simply by these two printf statements before and after. We can say int1 is equal to whatever value it is, and int1 after the call is equal to something as well. And the result of this function here, where it should add 1 to the value being passed in, is returned and printed out here. So the return value, which we're capturing as part of this result variable, is being printed out here. So what do we expect to happen then? So initially it's set to 1. So we're saying, well, before the run, the call, um, it should equal to 1. Then we're passing it in by value, and it's doing whatever it does with it, and we're capturing result. And after it comes back, this int 1 should be unchanged. It should still be 1. But the result, of course, will be 1 more, and that's what we expect to see here. So it should be 2. Hmm. Should we give that a run then and see what happens? Right, let's bring up the debugging window and have a look at that. Right, so I've connected to it. So we should see, right, the setup's completed. And then it simply repeats this little block of information forever and a day. So let's disconnect that and see what it's actually doing. So let's roll back up to the top. So we say before the increment, this is the very first time it's been called, int1 is equal to 1, as we'd expect. Because after all, the code over here sets it to 1. OK, and then it says um, after the increment, it's one again. So regardless of the fact that int one has been incremented within that function, the value in this function here, the main loop, it hasn't changed because it was a copy that we passed across. Cool. We understand that. And the result of this call, where it should have added one and it has done and returns it, is what we get over here. So from the function the result is 2. Great. Now because nothing has changed, it just keeps calling the same thing over and over and over again, we just get this block repeated ad infinitum. Hmm, okay. Now, you might think, what's the big deal? Well, sometimes it's extremely useful and indeed necessary, depending on what it is you're calling, um, to pass something by a reference. If you're passing something by a reference, it's basically pretty much like somebody pointing to something. And I'm not going to use the word pointer here because we'll get on to pointers at some future stage. But what we, if we were to pass this value in here by reference, it means we're not making this duplicate copy and then stuffing the values in there and going off you go. It goes here in memory is the variable and that's what we're referencing in the function. 
which means we can update it. Hmm. Let's change that particular function then that we're currently looking at to say, how do we pass things by reference then? And what's the big gotcha about passing things by reference? So here's another function that I've written, and it's called pass int by reference. Int my int, except of course you'll immediately see there's the little ampersand there to say by reference. That's exactly what that ampersand means in this particular context. So it's a reference to an integer, because it says int reference, my int, well you can call it what you like, doesn't matter. Now when we add something to my int now from here to here, that actual value that has been passed to us is being updated. It's the single value in memory. So if you look down into the loop area now, where we have our second call, pass int by variance int 1, we should see a difference between the value coming in here and the value being returned here. So it will go in as 1 and it will come back out as 2 because this lets us update the actual underlying memory because this is a reference to that memory, not a copy of the value. Now I've left the original one in just so you can see the difference. You'll see the interaction that passes by reference here to something that passes by value up here. So let's fire up the debug monitor and start this going. Right, there it is. So now we have several iterations. So let's stop that again and scroll back up to the top. So the very first time, which is this one down here, this bit here, that it, where it runs, um, we can see at the top there that we go in as one, we come out as one, and the result from that function is a two, exactly as we always had it, this bit here. But the next call to this one here, it says, well, before the increment, it was one, but afterwards, it's now two. We've actually updated the underlying memory value. Now, this is sort of a double-edged sword, isn't it, really? Do you want the value that you're passing into a function to have the power to fiddle about with that value? What if you're passing a sensor value that you've been given into a function that then changes that value? Now, it might be you're changing it from Fahrenheit to centigrade. So you throw Fahrenheit at it and you get centigrade back. Whoa, great, that's what you want. Uh, but what if you didn't want it? If you think that, no, I don't, I don't want you to change the underlying value of what I'm giving you. I'm just giving it to you as a value to get on with and work out some other stuff or perhaps logs to the cloud. You don't want it changing anything. So that's where pass by value, which is the default method of passing anything to a function, comes into its own. Something where you want a function to take the value coming in and not play with it. But if you do want that value to be updated or converted or incremented or whatever it is you need done done to that value, you pass it by reference. So the very easy way of doing it is just in the code, your function is just to put an ampersand either next to the int or the my int. There's a, a big school of thought about exactly where that ampersand should go, but it doesn't matter. And there we are, pass by reference. Now there we have a gotcha. What happens if the function you're calling is in fact a library function that you don't really know much about? Yeah, you're updating, I don't know, an LCD or calling something to update something else in the, in the, in the cloud, some function that you really have no idea about. You don't know easily whether the function you're calling is a pass by reference or a pass by value. And it may be prudent just to find out which one it is. Because if unknown to you, it's a pass by reference and it can update that value, that might not be what you want at all. So just beware that a library function could be doing this without even you finding out because you're calling it here from the loop without even understanding what's going on in the background in that black box of a library. Hmm, tricky, yeah. Now, we did mention right at the beginning there, could this also be some kind of pointer than this reference? Because after all, if you're passing by reference, the reference is by very nature pointing 
to the actual memory location that you passed in. Yeah, it's not a copy, it's the actual one. But, and surely a pointer then is something different to a reference. And in C++, the rule is pass by reference where you can and by pointer if you must. And by must, it means if you are calling perhaps a library routine, as I was with my little uh, ESP32 project going on there, um, quite often you pass by pointer because you can't do it by a reference. And uh, yeah, you need to understand that you need to pass it a pointer, not a reference. We'll be talking a lot more about pointers and how they really work when I finally get to the pointers uh, bacon bites video. Mm. It's, uh, it's easy once you get your head around it, but all this reference and value and pointer talk just makes it sound more complicated than it is. Good for dropping into the conversation at your next soiree. Hmm. Right, I'll put the code up into the GitHub, a few other pointers, <laughs> pun intended, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. And it might even be about pointers. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.